Hi, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Welcome to my channel. If you've never done so, why don't you subscribe? I love that. YouTube loves that. And whether or not you have a green thumb, give this video a thumbs up. I am celebrating because spring has finally come to Door County. So this is Potage week four and in today's episode I am replanting some very root-bound rosemary that have been taking shelter here in my art studio and my greenhouse this winter. I'm digging a small pond for the center of the garden, which you'll have to wait to see the finished product in next week's episode, and designing a tiny little Outlander-inspired wattle fence. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. I'm sure that your yard, just like mine, has revealed a lot of brush and twigs after the snow has melted. These little fences are so easy to make, they're secure, and they add the perfect amount of charm to your garden. In digging up this pond, I've got extra soil, and these rosemary really need it. So I keep these inside during the winter and outside during the summer. So I'm just bringing them out a little bit every day to get them used to the beautiful weather. Some are flowering, some are just growing like crazy, but they are definitely root bound and sad, and I don't have any extra pots right now. So since they're sunk down a little, I'm just going to pull them out and put a little bit of soil in the bottom and just try to give them an extra couple inches until I can get into town and get some new pots. Ideally, these are terracotta pots, not plastic. I really hate plastic. So I'm going to see if maybe this summer, if all the junk shops are open again and the antique shops, I can find some old terracotta. 
maybe do a little mixture of yogurt and moss and rub them down and try to get them to age like some of my old terracotta. But for now, this is going to have to do, but you can see how low they are. This one's doing pretty good. The moss on the top is beautiful, but you just need a little attention, which is pretty typical for spring. Everything's a little lonely and vying for my attention. And I have to say, I enjoy giving it my attention. This little bit of dirt got the first of my attention this year. I broad forked it, I raked it, I planted spinach seeds in wonderful straight lines and set out to build a wattle fence. Now I had made one last year, but I didn't really do it the way I wanted to and it had collapsed under the weight of the snow. So I started by taking twigs and evenly spacing them around the square. We pounded them in as best as we could. We have so many large rocks underneath the soil it does make uh, fencing challenging. Now if you're doing wattle fencing and you have access to willow branches or some softer branches, that is going to be very advantageous. I am using my collection of branches from all the trees that we've cut down on the property and they're pretty tough. But you weave them in and out of the little fence posts and that's as simple as it is. It makes a very sturdy structure it's completely charming, very historic, and I think Jamie and Claire would be proud. When I set out and created my initial design for this garden two years ago, it had a pond in the center, but Joel requested that I hold off on that because of Junior's age and just wanting to keep him safe. So he will be four years old this summer. And so this is my chance to dig up this rather pathetic circle in the middle. I've never really given it the attention that I give other areas of my garden because in my heart, I just wanted a pond. So the challenge is going to be, of course, how many rocks are buried beneath this soil? How fast can I move the soil out of here? Where am I going to put the soil? And how many little helpers can I recruit along the way? What are you doing, Ange? I am just, since we don't have the raised beds made yet, I'm just taking the dirt that we're digging and just cleaning these up and adding extra soil because they're a little sunk anyways. Hmm. But then, you know, as soon as we have the raised beds, then I'll start. I don't know, the dirt's gotta go somewhere, so. Right on. So I want it to look like the little pond in a good year. So I'm gonna dig it out and if you really think the uh, pond liner is trashed, then I'll cut into that. Pool. The pool liner, yep. And then I'll use whatever black fabric stuff is in the back. And I think I'll do like a nice, like raid the stone wall over on the property line and do a nice edge. Maybe put them on their side. Mm -hmm. Like just like line the whole thing with stone. The top, <laughs> down, and across. And then I found snails and tadpoles and mm. some plants and Groovy. I'd like to have a fountain out here so it doesn't get swampy but um, we'll see. And there it is, solid bedrock. So the challenge continues. Now you're going to have to watch the next installment of Potager to see what happens. But if you know me, 
you know that I am not going to take no for an answer, and I will have my pond. Thanks so much for watching. This season has just begun. Next time we will be planting. I'll show you the finished product of the pond. If you would like some more gardening inspiration, you should watch this video right here and this one right here. Be sure to thumbs up, share this on your favorite social media platforms if you find it enjoyable. Subscribe. I'll see you later. A bientôt.